Mama Max is a Texas-based 27-year-old YouTuber who's cultivated a dedicated audience through social media platforms like YouTube and Patreon due to his boundary-crossing YouTube series in which he hunts uh, PDF files on the internet while using a curriculum of impactful tools in filmmaking to express his distaste for the insidious, grotesque personalities that take advantage of youth. He's a pretty polarizing figure. Many stand by his side and applaud his tactical prowess as they're convinced he gets the job done. However, there are others that believe his actions are an egregious strategy that treads deeply within the lines of exploitation. And some even believe that this this whole PDF file hunting thing is a masquerade, it's a grift, using a powerful subject that people believe in to gain an audience that will shower Max with donations and Patreon subs in the hopes that Max will take down future virtual deviance. When it comes to Max, there's a lot of questions that have been asked. How did he get to this destination on YouTube? Where did he come from? As well as the looming irony that Max himself has his own allegations that have come back to haunt him. Not only that, but it seems in recent months there's a possibility that the wheels are beginning to fall off this persona, and his career is at risk, as others, including ones in his own community, have begun to question the strategies that he uses and implements to gain his success and get the word out about PDF files. Max has said on record his reasoning for becoming a YouTuber was eventually to learn as much of the craft as he could and then use those tools to become a worthy filmmaker. The whole point of doing YouTube was like to learn filmmaking because the ultimate goal is to make films, right? And so that's why I started my YouTube channel in the first place was to learn how to make films. Uh, and as you can see, like those of you who have been around for a while, you can see like the evolution of my channel. Like as time went on, I just got, you know, better and better at filmmaking. His channel itself was created after Max began to notice how successful Leafy Is Here was and how easy Leafy made it look. The people that inspired me to make my channel, I kind of hate having to bring this up because it's people that I, I currently don't like anymore. Oh, really? But yeah, mm -hmm. so like, like people like Leafy were like the ones that like made me like get on my channel. Because I saw how fast he was growing from doing something so simple, like he's just yeah. talking, and 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 I was like, "All oh, right, that's pretty cool. I I want to do that." And you know, uh, like others like Pyrocynical and uh, Grade A Under A H three H three, um, even Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, like kind of inspired me because, uh, yeah, I, I can yeah. I can see that. And Max felt like he could have success with taking that route. Sometime around late 2015, early 2016, Max would begin creating content by making videos that he would call YouTube hell. These videos were similar to what is considered a YouTube poop, which is a video short in length edited comedically to cause confusion. However, the difference with Max's content was that he would use clips of, uh, of hentai and other visuals that push boundaries. His content would also shift towards commentary topics like Leafy, Ethan, uh, Lieutenant Corbus, etc. He would also reportedly inherit the name Mama Max due to a Filthy Frank reference because his fan base saw similarities to Filthy Frank. And uh, I guess people got like Filthy Frank vibes from my channel because before I did Life Sucks, I did, um, I just did these like insane edits called YouTube hells. They were basically like YouTube poops, but they were about a specific um, YouTuber usually. And they were, they always had like a shitload of hentai in them because I thought hentai was hilarious at the time. And uh, yeah, I get people just started calling me, uh, you know, Papa Max. And I'm like, well, why don't y'all just call me Mama Max? Cause like, it's an alliteration. Uh, so that's where the mama from Mama Max comes from. It's from Filthy Frank. Max's content would evolve into Max narrating over animations that were drawn by his sister in an episodic series that was called Life Sucks. The Life Sucks series was basically an outlet for Max because if you go back and watch his old Life Sucks series, you'll find out he's a very uh, cringy, lonely, emo, sad boy 
you know, the whole incel vibes. He had zero filter and also zero life experience. Uh, Max would use the series to let all his Zoomer frustrations out into the world. Uh, in these videos, he'd rant about how awful his family was. He'd reveal personal details about his relationships due to heartbreak. He'd even try to wedge in inspirational segments that came off more like a cringy you can do it montage. All while showing clips of anime and tackling serious subjects like t terrorism and using pretentious phrases like malevolently melancholy. <laughs> malevolently melancholy is like the name of my band in high school. Like <laughs> Although, you can see a glimpse of a talented filmmaker here. Max's series was just a hot garbage, and I think Max would even agree with me there, which is why these videos are no longer public on his channel. If you ever want to have a laugh, just search up a re-uploaded version of the Life Sucks episode, and you'll literally feel secondhand embarrassment watching it. Whether you're malevolently melancholy or fucking frustrated or disturbingly infuriated or have the absence of all emotion and feel so depressed that you could vertically slice your genitals in half till blood spews out of it like a fire hose, then this video was made just for you. Hey guys, it's Valentine's Day, and while everyone else out there is getting their faces fucked and contracting STDs or flaunting out their clearly broken relationships with PDA, or even just being cute with the one they love and making you feel like poop, I am here with you today to tell you that it's the end of the world and everything is falling apart, so it's time to set yourself on fire and die. I'm kidding. I'm here to tell you to not worry one little bit if you're lonely today. Also, I want to note that some of the women discussed in these Life Sucks video would eventually show up again years later with their own stories. Um, but, you know, more to come to that when we get there. Look, we've all made content in the past that we regret, but for Max, it would kind of get worse. He would eventually grow too depressed to continue his Life Sucks series about being depressed, which is very ironic, and would push it to the side for something he would consider as more more fun. That more fun thing was hentai reviews. I started making the life sucks because I was depressed and wanted to help other people. And then I started making hentai reviews because my channel wasn't doing well and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and I was just confused about everything. And I was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to review hentai. Fuck everything. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm not going to get too much into the hentai reviews because uh, I want ads, <laughs> but just know there's a lot of weird stuff. I want to touch and feel. I want to know what's fucking real. To actually have control of the wheel. I don't want to just sit and watch as I rub and grip my crotch. I'm so bored of that shit, so stop. I can see they're just balloon boobs. I know it's all cartoon poon. I'm reminded every new moon, but I'm a savage and I liked it. I'm ravenous and I'm violent with anime in my privates. I'm just lonely and thirsty. I was only someone searching for mostly one to hold me. Or, you know, just someone who cares enough about me to be willing to at least be comfortable enough to make contact with my skin and not walk away ashamed and making excuses as to why I'm supposed to be an untouchable substance for them? Pardon me. Uh, this is around the time Max would gain traction as a YouTuber in late 2016, early 2017, in which he would surpass a few milestones in his subscriber count and begin to help him network with other YouTubers such as Elvis the Alien and Corpse Husband who were making similar content. In fact, he would also be the first guest on the infamous podcast Hot Wet Soup where he admitted to being able to suck his own dick. <laughs> What yeah, the that actually fuck? Uh, reminds me. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead, we'll Max. Link a picture. I am an alien. Everybody, link a picture. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say, Max? Um, I forgot to mention I can do something that I don't really like talking oh. about. Um, oh god! Oh, I'm ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> I can suck my own dick. <laughs> what? Oh shit! Yes. No. Like Marilyn no, Manson? No, I really no. can. I re I really no can do that. No Yes. How? How? Maybe. That, that, are you missing some ribs? Yeah. Just, you, I mean, <laughs> no, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's just long enough for me to do it. Or... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just... Good for you, Max. Um, it's more like giving head than receiving, you, you know? After the hentai reviews grew stale, that wasn't the only thing that grew stale. <laughs> 
I need to not do that every time I have a gag. <laughs> After the hentai reviews grew stale for Vax, he would transition into game reviews, in which he reviewed games like Dead Space and Elder Scrolls. But this unfortunately did not fulfill Max, and as he saw the rising increase of content that had a darker subject matter from creators like Nexpo, Lemino, Ahoy, and Mudahar, he became inspired and made a switch to more of a horror atmosphere. He would then upload a spooky video on the viral indie game Kanye Quest, which would blow up in the algorithm. Speaking of ads, by the way, um, I'm actually currently not making money from ad rev on YouTube uh, because there's some weird shenanigans that are happening with the company, the MCN that I'm with. I have a second channel where I stream and you can become a channel member and it's all very pog. So here's a new model. <laughs> uh, please don't draw too much rule 34 of this design. Um... I understand he's very attractive. So let's get to the pedo hunting, shall we? On March 27th, 2020, Mama Max would upload another spooky video, which was called Cartoon Incorporated. The video surrounded theories that Elsa Gate was still alive and well, and how pedophiles were using children's cartoon channel to take advantage of minors. The video would include a segment where Max would actively hunt and bait an alleged pedo in a voice call, and uh, once he did that, there was really no looking back. He was hooked. Uh, Max had so much fun in his quest to capture pedos that he became addicted to it and wanted to do it again. Didn't really expect to do like pedo hunting stuff until I like, I just tried it and it was so much fun that I just wanted to, to like do it again. And then it's, it's gotten to the point now where it's like, now I feel like I have a duty to like, you know, do what I do for children because um, I think that is what we should be prioritizing as a species is like our children. So I think that is, uh, that, that is basically the evolution of my channel so far. Like how Max was inspired by creators like Nexpo, he would find inspiration with the pedo hunters on YouTube like the channel Anxiety War, and he would take his content to the next level. No longer would it be creepy anecdotal stories that may or may not be true. Max had evolved into a pedophile hunter with a filmmaking aesthetic, juxtaposed with Hotline Miami scenery. So now Max would begin to develop a team in which the main goal was to expose pedophiles within the virtual circles that infested the internet. Uh, while doing this, he would create the content in the same vein as an artistic horror movie, using filmmaking tactics to convey a more inventive approach within the YouTube spectrum. His videos were incredibly watchable and they involved a source of content that brought in a lot of views. The formula of a dark subject matter mixed with the righteous pathway into giving a viewer a feeling of doing something good by watching the video basically beat out the algorithm as the video on Cartoon Incorporated would obtain millions of views. And from Max's perspective, he had found his passion. This was who Max would become. On June 19th, 2020, Max would upload a video where he infiltrated a chatting website for minors called kidschat.net, which felt like an old school open chat room that was advertised towards children, which unfortunately, of course, meant it was also like shooting fish in a barrel when it came to finding a pedo. Max would show the face of an alleged deviant he had been chatting with, unveiling the person's photo to an audience of millions. And also in the video, Max was having trouble getting the details from another alleged pedo. So apparently he traveled to the deep web to hire a hacker, but the craziest thing that happened in this video, and I gotta be honest, it's kinda unbelievable, is that the alleged pedo in the chat room had apparently hacked Mama Max's email and uploaded audio of a woman screaming to it. Never added me on Skype or Discord. I guess he's too smart for that. He did, however, find my catfish email that's attached to those accounts. Now, I have no idea how he did this. The only places I've used this email address were on Discord, Skype, and Children's Chat. And as far as I'm concerned, they don't publicly share that information. Unless there was a security breach or I forgot to privatize that info, I haven't the slightest clue how he was able to find it. But here he is. All he sent was an MP3 file. Labeled.
As his uploads continued to increase in views, Max would cultivate a very dedicated audience that would do anything for him. And as a YouTube ad revenue had always been lackluster for Mama Max, the enormous source of income primarily came from his Patreon. This allowed Max to facilitate a budget for his monumental and debt-inducing videos. However, YouTube still had a stranglehold on Max due to the subject matter of the videos. The best way you can help, honestly, is through Patreon. That's the best way you can help like that. That is the lifeblood of the channel. Like that is where I get all my money. None of my videos until Prey made ad revenue. Like none of my, my more recent content made any ad revenue. Um, at least not to where it makes it different. Like I get like, you know, a video that makes 2 million views gets me a check for like 20 bucks. So that should tell you something about how much Patreon is uh, important to the channel. Um, it wouldn't be long before Max felt like he was pushed into a corner by YouTube and he would use his own clout to strike back at the platform. On September 26, 2020, Mama Max would make a video basically lambasting YouTube for taking down one of his videos for harassment and bullying. The original video with Mama Max attempted to expose a mobile app called MyLol, which apparently was being hijacked by potential pedophiles due to the app being advertised as a dating app for minors which would make them vulnerable to deviant predators. In the video, Max would dox multiple potential pedophiles, including showing an actual phone number. This is from the uncensored version. He would also show imagery of him having a gun put into his mouth. Quite a few things that might not have been considered TOS friendly from YouTube's perspective. YouTube is a frustrating process. A lot of times content creators will upload a video, follow community guidelines to a T, and for some reason the automated system will still be alerted and through no fault of the uploader, YouTube will take down the video and initiate community guideline violations. We've seen this time and time again, and YouTubers are forced to deal with automated replies to try and get this fixed. And a lot of the times it goes nowhere. So one can relate to Max's frustrations during this situation. And at the time, a lot of creators did as well. However, this would be the first instance of Mama Max taking a very sensationalized approach in attacking YouTube, using his content as a sort of advantage. In his content, Max hunts pedophiles. Therefore, from Max's uh, perspective, if YouTube takes his content down, they're actually aiding pedos from being stopped by Max himself. With hindsight, I definitely think this is an unfair approach because although Max may think his content is special, the balance of YouTube should allow all content to be treated the same and therefore when the platform takes down a video, it's not actually an attack, it's simply either an oversight or the YouTuber in question actually broke the TOS. To paint YouTube as a platform that's helping pedos to avoid capture is just absolutely fucking preposterous. So I don't know why Mama Max would think he's so special here. We all know this now, but at the time Max was able to really crank up the narrative and content creators ran with it. In his video, Max would ask his audience to basically pester any creator with any sort of clout to get in touch with YouTube and use the hashtag AnswerUsPedotube. More than happy to accept that this was another silly mistake by Team YouTube. I have already tried reaching out to you on my own, and you ignored me, so you brought this upon yourself. To my lovely audience, you are the only ones who can help me get an answer from them. It's all up to you now. The fans. And oh boy, after this, Max unleashed his audience onto YouTube with the goal of getting his video reinstated. Many saw this as an act of goodwill. Max was doing the platform a favor by hunting disgusting and hideous cretins who invaded the space. Getting these people away from these platforms and making the youth aware of them was a plotted practice by the community. Only some really criticized Max, and mainly they were critical of how he went about it. You see, there's going to be a pattern here with Mama Max. It's going to be about how his process in executing these things comes with exaggerated tactic. One YouTuber who would place some pushback against Mama Max was, yet again, another commentary mainstay, Tommy C who reacted to Mama Max's Answer Us Pedotube and had some respectful criticisms against the content creator. The main point Tommy, along with his co-host at the time, Nicholas Diorio, alluded to was that YouTube was in no way, shape, or form purposefully trying to protect pedophiles here, and that more likely the reasoning Max's video was taken down 
was because of the verbiage and the imagery shown in the video that may have tripped the algorithm, which caused an automated community guidelines violation. When you're talking about uh, pedophile rings and all this shit, you have to use words like CP, child yeah. pornography. You yeah, have to true. use words like sexual assault, sexual violence. I was 15. All of these things are might also trip out of context. the algorithm. It might yeah, when you're using bot. bots, when you're using the algorithm, I mean, you're tr you're asking them to do like context. So this is kind of difficult already, right? Yeah. And now you're adding in the element of horror, uh, mm. lynching babies, yeah. um, lynching like babies. blood covered fucking jump scares. Right. Right. Yeah. All of these other things I was three like, years old. The algorithm. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. And he sounds like the Mandarin. It's really easy for this to be accidentally fun, and it sounds like the Mandarin. So yeah, he does. <laughs> he sounds like the Mandarin. Six years old. Tommy also respectfully pointed out in that doing something like this and creating a ruckus on social media could lead to an overcorrection, similar to what happened with the Matt What It Is guy from the hashtag Wake Up YouTube, which eventually led to a lot of channels getting wrongfully demonetized along with the second adpocalypse. Sometimes it's not a good idea to play games like this and try and wake the beast. You might not like the answer you get. Now, at this point, Tommy was respectful uh, things would change in December of 2021. As for this situation, uh, Mama Max would claim that the video was a success because it opened a dialogue with YouTube and got him an answer as to why the video was taken down, which um, was apparently due to him showing a phone number. Gee, what a shocker. Uh, Moist Critical would also mention Max to the CEO of YouTube at the time in a conversation in which Susan agreed that they would implement ways that YouTube could warn the creator that something had violated the community guidelines before actually taking down the video and giving the channel a strike. This also comes into play with Mama Max's video, if you remember that controversy that happened where Mama Max had this huge video that got taken down, and it was taken down, if I remember correctly, because he showed a phone number for like three seconds on screen. Well, instead of taking that whole video down, why not just let Mama Max know, take this out and the video stays up? I'm sure he would have obliged using YouTube's editing tools. So I wanted to make sure that they heard that suggestion, and Susan, in particular, really liked the idea and really wanted to press that on the policy team, and the policy had also liked the idea and wanted to explore ways of slowly implementing this policy over time, too. So it just really felt like everyone there was actually receptive to feedback. Susan was pressing questions to the policy team guy about, well, why aren't we doing this? Can we do this? Using our feedback. Max would eventually re-upload the video with a few edits, and everything seemed copacetic. But there would be another hashtag. You see, after the success of Mama Max's upload titled Puppy Stomp, which centered around a villainous miscreant who exploited animal abuse for profit, on November 26, 2021, Mama Max would upload another video. This time, Max was taking on IMVU, which is basically a virtual world where people can interact with each other through avatars on the internet. Max investigated the platform and found that there were some that used the website to allegedly act with abhorrent intentions. In fact, Max was actually able to get an alleged pedophile's face by literally sending him a picture of his own ass in tight leggings. <laughs> Something interesting that Max actually did in a later video was he got this man's location by having his team create a fake article on him proclaiming that he was a pedophile. But in reality, it was an IP grabber, and when this alleged pedophile clicked the link, the team had his location. Now that, my friends, is very fucking scary. But nonetheless, just like Max's prior videos on MyLol, the IMVU video was taken down by YouTube. And this sent Max into a frenzy as he again uploaded another video criticizing YouTube for their actions. But if the previous video attacking YouTube was over the top, this one was just completely out to lunch. Okay, so so get this. Uh, basically, Max showed a virtual bare ass on the video, and that was flagged for violating YouTube's policy on nudity or sexual content. So instead of Max just simply maybe re-editing the video and re-releasing it, Max decided to upload a video pointing the finger at YouTube again and inventing this narrative that YouTube is protecting pedophiles again. You endlessly punish those of us who create content in response to injustice, speaking up for victims like children and pursuing the perpetrators like pedophiles. It is volatile, intense, disturbing, upsetting, raw, and real. 
because that is the subject matter it is covering and that is the way it should be covered. Max also collaborated with a variety of YouTubers in which each one aired out their grievances with the platform. So in a way, Max camouflaged his aggressive video against YouTube as more as a diversification of healthy critiques. But that all goes away when it gets to Max's part in which he goes like bat shit insane. <laughs> So, for example, he calls out Susan Wojcicki and tells her to do something for once or step the fuck down, which she eventually would do. Max had no role in that, by the way. It just, it happened. Uh, Philip DeFranco proclaiming that uh, good old sexy Phil had purposefully ignored Max <laughs> because he was dealing with another drama. He also hinted that Phil wouldn't cover Max because he wasn't a big creator. He also called out Ethan Klein, who Max asked very politely due to Max hearing that Ethan had actually helped Max out prior. He also called out Keemstar slash Scarce, who <laughs> Max has nothing but love for because Keem and Scarce helped him out last time. Notice a pattern? Everybody who's helped him prior gets a warm greeting, and the ones who didn't, well, Max gets very aggressive towards. What else? He also called out Moist Critical, who claims that uh, Charlie's past video talking to uh, the CEO of YouTube aged like milk. I don't know how it's Charlie's fault that things change with time, but they did. <laughs> oh, Max also called out Chris Hansen, you know, to catch a predator, Chris Hansen. <laughs> Uh, why? I don't know. Apparently Max believed Hansen had fucked up before, and thus he must make things right by using his connections to get in touch with YouTube for Mama Max. He calls out Shane Dawson, basically giving Shane a chance at redemption given that Shane had been cancelled the year prior, as if he were to step up and report on Mama Max losing his video, all would be forgiven. Which I don't think would really help Shane at all, and as time has gone on, not great. <laughs> There was also a call out to Corpse Husband, which is a bit of a doozy, so stick with me here. Uh, Max and Corpse Husband do not like each other, and Max uses this part of the video to address some petty beef between the two because Corpse threw Max under the bus when Corpse said the dreaded R slur while reading a script from Mama Max on his channel for one of the Life Sucks videos. Max declared that Corpse owed him a favor, and he wanted Corpse to pay his debt by talking about YouTube taking down Max's video. Corpse, I know you have nothing to do with this, but with all of your power, influence, and the favor you owe me, I just couldn't help myself. So, remember when you reached out after years of not speaking to me while I was at the hospital tending to my sick girlfriend, and you kept trying to rush me home to do you a huge favor, and then you threw me under the bus for something you did, and at the same time acted like you were taking full responsibility for it. But I let you do it because I thought you were going to be my friend like you used to be, and then you stopped talking to me immediately after you were done using me. So oh, Max also takes another slight shot at Tommy C by clipping Tommy reacting to his previous video and then goes on an unhinged rant about how he wants his audience to overwhelm social media with pleas for YouTube to bow down to the ever so powerful Mama Max. And if they don't, then they must back a pedophile. Gonna have to upset all of my fellow creators and make a goddamn disaster out of you, YouTube, because you never do anything until we start squeezing your balls. And this is the part where you come in. Children, the links are in the description. I kindly ask you to come with me to make a fucking mess for the second time. I want you to pace this bitch until the world is nauseous from looking at it. I want you to drown out every trending topic so that even something like Spider-Man looks like a microscopic speck of dust compared to us. And tonight, you two will choose. Let die the pedophiles they love, or suffer the little children. And by the end of the night, I want Twitter to be a shitstorm. Uh, this time, Max had a new hashtag, of course, hashtag pick aside YouTube, another formulaic, sensationalized attack on the platform that can be interpreted as being completely selfish. Uh, basically, it polarizes Max's movement with an either you're with us or you're against us narrative, uh, with the caveat that if you're against, 
well, then you're backing pedophiles. And ergo, maybe you are one. Again, like the last time the narrative was on Max's side, However, it wasn't as powerful of an approach as last time. The poorly manufactured structure of his execution definitely changed a few opinions, as now there were detractors who criticized Max. There was also a narrative that Max had misled some of the YouTubers who were reaching out to them to collaborate on a video. Some did not know this would turn into a YouTube protects pedophile video. One of the few detractors that stood out was, <laughs> no fucking way, Vito. <laughs> Okay, so here's some of the detractors that stood out. Uh, Vito Gishwaldi, Lurix, Tipster, and Tommy C. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so Vito is an edgy comedic YouTuber known for his YouTube channel of the same name, as well as being a co-host on the podcast The Biggest Problem in the Universe with Dick Masterson. And they would reply to Mama Max's tweet asking YouTube to pick a side, children or pedophiles with a tweet saying, I pick pedophiles. Uh, now, it's obvious from Vito's response that this was not serious. Nonetheless, the tweet was meant to create a mockery of Mama Max's narrative. Lyrix was an up-and-coming commentary YouTuber who took umbrage with Mama Max's execution, uh, calling it out YouTube and made two videos uh, being heavily critical of him. However, Lyrix would eventually disappear from the internet and take down most of his videos, only to reemerge again in 2023. Okay, so uh, t Tipster uh, is another veteran of the commentary community. Tipster would be very critical of Mama Max's approach and would attempt to get Max on for an interview, but unfortunately, he would implode when going back and forth with Max on Twitter, resulting in Tipster deactivating and taking a massive L. He would later apologize to Mama Max for some reason, probably because Tipster's fat ass has no spine. <laughs> Tommy C would eventually become the Bowser to Mama Max's Mario, and apparently from what Max would dictate, him being able to stop pedos on YouTube was his Princess Peach. But how did Tommy C become Mama Max's main antagonist? It all starts with the live stream. Now, as you saw before on Tommy's first live stream, Tommy was very charitable to Max. He stated he liked the filmmaking aspect of his channel, but did not agree with the execution of going after YouTube because it was a slippery slope. Now, here, Tommy is seeing it happen again in real time, and I think this was a case of fool me once, shame on you. And Tommy was not going to get fooled the second time. He saw it right through Mama Max's boastful and cerebral plot armor and knew that it was nothing but a facade. Therefore, Tommy called bullshit on the whole thing for the whole world to see, or for the very least the few 500 concurrent viewers that were watching in that very moment. For context, December 28th, 2021, Tommy C was doing a live reaction to Mama Max's pick a side video. Tommy had not yet watched the video because he wanted to save his reaction for the moment, but he was already critical on Max's approach due to the pick aside narrative. Within five minutes of the stream going live, Max attempts to join to talk to Tommy, but Tommy refuses. He was not going to talk to Max without seeing the video first. Tommy would go on to hammer Max's video. Vito would also join Tommy in criticizing Max's ridiculous execution harping on how absurd the YouTube protects pedophile narrative actually is. Tommy also points out that Max calling out people like Charlie, Susan, and Phil in an attempt to s scare them is just that, a scare tactic. The best part, though, is when Tommy finds out that he's featured in this video, only to go on one of the most underrated rants in streaming history. I get in here. Unfucking believable That's You know what? Funny. You know what that tells me? He didn't send me the fucking DM because he knew I would fucking see right through it. He knew I would see through it. He knew I would expose him. And he figured putting me at the end, this is a threat. This is a fucking threat. Hey, 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 jerk off. Go fuck yourself. You're a fucking liar. You're a piece of shit. You're not a journalist. You don't give a- You're a clout chasing just another YouTuber. You're no different than anybody else. You don't give a rat's ass. And you can suck my dick. There you go. Oh, oh, I, I couldn't count on Tommy C keeping his mouth shut. You're damn fucking right. That's the only goddamn thing you did right, you cocksucker. There you go. 
He was trying to strong arm you into not making yeah, it. Yeah, fuck you. Him. Fuck you. Oh, How man. about this? How about this? How about look at the camera? You know what? <laughs> you look like a creepy pedophile. I don't know that for a fact, but it looks like you with the blood in your mouth and the fucking deep voice. Maybe you touched a kid or two. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just saying, you cocksucker. You do that shit to me, I'll do it to fucking you, you jerk off. That's what it is, wannabe piece of shit. You don't give a shit about kids. I actually have to. Is anybody fucking you to make one? I bet they can't. Who could fucking deal with this shit? You phony, you fraud, you fake. Suck Tommy, a did dick. You pick a side, though? You gotta pick a side. Pick a side. How about this? <laughs> the side of my nuts. Get down on your hands and knees and lick my fucking hairy Irish bulls. So after this whole narrative breaks, Mama Max would continue to go on a publicity tour on different podcasts, addressing the criticisms and pretty much conceding to the fact that he was being incredibly hyperbolic with his narrative so he could get YouTube's attention. And as far as I'm able to tell, that those exist to like get the video viral, right? Oh, uh, for the most part, I'd say so. Do you, um, it's weird. So if your goal is to make like a message that um can reflect back and like actually produce real change on YouTube. Why would you go with such like an inflammatory hashtag? I, I don't know for people who haven't seen it, which is like next to nobody. Um, it's pick a side YouTube. Mm -hmm. Children are pedophiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think my video is going to fucking do anything. I want the people I call out in the video to do something because they're the ones YouTube is going to listen to. They ain't going to listen to fucking me. So you think your video is like the first in a domino effect? I was thinking that exact thing. Yes, it was like a well, domino effect. Steal the words. I'm just trying to get the ball rolling, and I feel like no one's gonna fucking care unless I make it this bombastic, stupid ass thing. So wait, okay, I wasn't expecting that answer. In fact, he would specifically use uh, the word bombastic. Max proclaimed that this video was made to fuel the fire and was a polarizing attempt to create as much attention as possible. Max also revealed he was conditioned to do stuff like this because YouTube doesn't care unless someone makes that much of an uproar. It should also be noted that the people Max listed that he wished would talk about it did actually speak out. Uh, for a second time, Moist Critical would talk about Mama Max as he would upload a video expressing his disdain for pedophiles while speaking out about how Max is getting the short end of the stick about from YouTube. However, Charlie would convey that he was completely against Max's approach and believed that the execution allowed Max's actual message to be distorted. Max apparently would get in contact with YouTube and would receive a YouTube partner manager. He would also re-upload a second version of his video that would just be a re-edit like before and he'd go back to making content. But you see, Max was not finished with Tommy C or any of his other detractors. He had something planned, but before before he could accomplish this, he was hit with a massive roadblock because Max was about to have a very busy 2022 as his past was about to unravel. And let's just say the hunter was about to become the hunted. Okay, before we get on to the Mama Max allegations, uh, let's talk about who's helped with this video. Uh, one, my, my, my writer, Matt Pitt, thank you for all the work you've done. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's also The Unseen, who did a lot of the research help with Matt, uh, not to mention Nicholas DiOrio and uh, Mudahar, some ordinary gamers who have been uh, primary liaisons in this whole story and, and all of that. And there's so much to it. And it'll just keep going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. What's a YouTube drama without allegations? Am I right, guys? Uh, so remember when I had talked about the women, right? And, and, and Max's Life Sucks series? Well, these would all come back into the fold, and here we are. Throughout the span of a few years, while Mama Max gained the reputation as being this prolific and artistic pedophile hunter and gathering acclaim throughout social media, he would begin to procure some pushback from people in his personal life after becoming a success behind the scenes. These people were like the ghosts of his past, coming back to haunt him in the shape of his ex-girlfriends. Old relationships gone wrong that included a hefty amount of accusations against them. These girls had apparently found each other as they would make their stories public and would begin to network with one another to reveal their stories. The more time that went by, the more women would come forward. Max apparently
Riley knew about the collection of his ex-girlfriend. He'd been very weary of them, mentioning them publicly from time to time, conveying he was being cyber-stalked and slandered. Not since I started doing pedo hunting, except for one, and it was about cyber-stalkers. It was about the people, <laughs> about some of my exes, and then among other people like who were stalking me and trying to like make a coup to like cancel me. And so it was a, it was going to be a video all about that. Ah. Uh, um, but I asked and I asked everyone like I took a poll in my community post. I think I've posted this before. Like should I make a video on this? And everyone said yes, like overwhelmingly. But at the end of the day I was like maybe it's a better idea if I just let them do what they want and just deal with it if it ever comes to light. So that way I can that way I'm not being the bad guy by like starting shit with them and they do they can say what they want and I will respond to it. And I think it'd yeah. be better that way. That way I can tell the full story. Because I have I have receipts, I have pictures, I have everything. So this wasn't something that came out of nowhere for him. He knew it was coming and was more than prepared to defend himself. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth with the accusations, but I will simplify everything for each girl that has publicly come forward. Paulina was one of Mama Max's more recent girlfriends within that time period. In fact, she worked with him behind the scenes on his videos using her voice to bait pedos into conversations as she pretended to be a minor. You can even hear her voice on a few of Max's uploads. She would call out Mama Max on her Instagram story, stating that he did not care about her safety and would ridicule her behind her back with other friends. She also stated that Max was too distracted with his videos to show her any attention, even when she begged. And Paulina would also allege that Max gave out all of her information to his new girlfriend, who was reportedly a vicious person that had a history of harassing people. Lucy is a Tasmanian and began dating Max in 2016, their relationship lasting until 2018. She would state that she had begun dating Max when she was only 17 years old, and also claimed that Max had lied about his age to make it seem like he was younger, claiming that he was an 18 year old when he was actually 20. Lucy would reveal that allegedly nudes were exchanged between the two while Lucy was still a minor, and she would also go on to accuse Max of sexual assault during an incident in 2017 in which the 19-year-old Lucy had flown to Texas to visit him. Mama Max admittedly made a video on her back in the day called Life Sucks Depression, to which he would later claim that this activated her and she had begun hurling accusations towards him ever since. Olivia would continuously go public about her accusations on TikTok. She claimed that Max was extremely abusive towards her, flinging objects at her while in an argument, guilt tripping her into sex, and she also stated that Max was emotionally manipulative, proclaiming that he had said she killed his unborn children after Max claimed she cheated on him because they would talk about having children in the past, and her cheating meant that they would no longer have children together, therefore the non-existent children were murdered. The most egregious accusation, however, is that at one point Max allegedly had his way with her while she slept. It is to note that Olivia would later say she did give permission for Max to do this, but would later take it back and say she wasn't into it, in which Max would not take her seriously when she took it back. On April 14th, 2022, some of the accusations would come to light on social media when Twitter user at Volpereza would also claim to be a close friend to Paulina and would make a Twitter thread broadcasting Paulina's accusations to the world. Soon, other accusers would join in on Twitter. Some of the smaller commentary channels would report on accusations such as these, as this all mainly orbited the smaller community, and it didn't really get picked up by bigger channels. Eventually, a small YouTuber would step in to defend Mama Max. The smaller YouTuber in this context would be Craig Beckett. Absolutely no one should have picked up this story as is and even humoured the idea that this could have possibly even been remotely legitimate. But they did. Mama Max exposed. Huge allegations surface. I try and limit the amount of punching down I do because yes, we all end up taking on stupid topics on our way up and I'm sure I'm going to have more than a few myself in the future. Craig Beckett was an up and coming British commentary channel who latched onto the Mama Max story when the accusations began to unfold. He had a lot of questions for the accusers and conveyed trepidation towards their story as at that point there was basically zero evidence except 
testimonial screenshots, nothing else. Beckett would produce a video that was over an hour and a half long in April of 2022, going over the accuser's stories as well as the testimonies from Mama Max's side. In the video, Beckett basically attacked the accusers for their lack of evidence, as well as criticized smaller commentary channels for covering the one-sided story without looking into it more. The video included an interview from Mama Max himself, which I believe would be the first time Mama Max would speak publicly out in detail about these allegations. In the interview, he would dissect all of the accusations that were presented to him by Craig Beckett. For Olivia, he would go on to give his side of the story, as well as unveil an audio recording of Olivia talking freely to Max post-relationship about their past. In this snippet, Olivia seemed comfortable and relaxed and even joked with Max. She, she was playing the game. Correct. She, she was playing the game as much as much as you were at the time. Like Correct. Both... Right, okay. I think that was all of the questions I saw in, in her accusations against you, unless there were other well, ones that I've missed. Is there something else that she's tried to accuse you of, may I ask? Well, Craig, let me uh, show you this Google Drive. You're going to notice three names. Uh, let me know when you have it open. Uh, I do, yes, I see the names. Okay, so since we're on Olivia right now, I would like you to open Ollie Wang, and I would like you to listen to the recording. Uh, you can play it for your audience if you want. I broke up with you literally because you were boring, <laughs> to say the least. We never hung out. We never did anything. Mm. We never saw each other. Even though we lived together, we never did anything. I was bored as shit. I guess it was just the wrong time for me. I g or maybe we just were never supposed to be together. I mean, that, yeah, that that too. Why all the like? Why all the weird accusations though? Like the because I'm so tired of seeing these fucking thirteen-year-olds making fan edits. My ex-boyfriend who made me go fucking crazy because he was fucking crazy. So you're being spiteful. Um, I'm being mad. <laughs> what, if I told, what if I told the internet you tried to kill me? That I tried to kill you? Mm-hmm. Uh, did I try to kill you? No. If it got to the point where people are like, can you respond to this, Max? Then I would... I'd be like, it's not true. For Lucy, Max claimed that she was 18 when they started talking to each other, and that if she was 17 then, and it was only a three year age difference. He also originally lied about his age to avoid being doxxed, and stated that when they began dating, he told her his real age. Max would also be very critical of Paulita's accusations as he claimed that he had numerous amounts of screenshots that proved the exact opposite and that Max was very understanding of her and tried his best there to be there for her. He also said he nor his team had ever doxxed her and that she had doxxed herself and he and his team tried to help her through it. From Max's perspective, the relationship ended when Max would allow Paulina to see his DMs. But when Max asked to see hers, she refused, and he ended it then and there. When Craig's video was uploaded, the accusers took to Twitter to defend themselves. Craig's video was at first considered to be a hit, and it was well received, but Craig would throw this all away when he decided for some reason to pick a fight with the commentary YouTubers Augie RFC and Nicholas Diorio. For some reason, Craig got a little too big for his britches and felt that Nick and Augie should acknowledge him, and went back and forth with them on Twitter, which would transition into a complete disaster as Augie and Nick made a mockery of Craig that was culminated in a spectacular Augie RFC live stream where Augie took the piss out of Craig, made fun of his videos, and basically memed on a small YouTuber. Craig, a man who had previously admitted he did not like going on live streams to debate, avoided the confrontation, and Augie and Nick were deemed victorious by the public, especially within the commentary community. Thus, his video at that point seemed to be a failure. So he tweets at Diorio, right? And he's like, Dear Oreo, first of all, you know he's a spur because he says Oreo and then he spells it like the cookie, you know? Like, it's, it's yeah. like, and then he's also throwing like the passive aggressive womanly emojis in there and just, uh, it's just terrible. Anyway, he said, I would tag you, but you have me blocked. I would tag you, but you have me blocked, Nick. It's been a day. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> It's been coming up a month since this comment. It's been a month. <laughs> Dude, this guy is such a fucking bitch. He's been thinking about this for a fucking month. But what has he been thinking about? He says, 
I know you looked into it behind the scenes, and my video has been out for over a week. Going to say anything yet? Look at this. Boogie posting his boxing fight. Imagine Boogie commits to this and gets healthier than Diorio. Meanwhile, he's a complete total <laughs> fat ass. We got a fat person alert. Do, 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 do. Fat person. You're fucking fat, dude. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, bro. This guy's really? a fucking lol cow. Why is he randomly thinking about you, too? You know what I mean? Like, why is he just randomly like, huh? Oh, I wonder if Diorio is, uh, is gonna get skinny soon. It's like, dude, you're such a fucking spur. Nobody, why are you thinking about this right now? This would not be the last we would see of Craig Beckett either. Max would continue to do interviews on other channels. Some of them were obviously biased as they were fans of Max and their channel was basically a carbon copy of Mama Max's, same editing style, etc. But after things were quiet for a bit, that's when the allegations resurfaced once again. But this time in a Mama Max exposed video. On July 23rd, 2022, a video would be uploaded exposing Mama Max as most of the women from before would appear again to tell their side of the story. But there was someone new, an accuser that went even further back than any of the other girlfriend. An accuser that never even dated Max, but actually dated the uploader of the exposed video. Magnetar, aka Anthony. You see, Magnetar, Mama Max, and a new accuser named Haley, oh, they go way back. Back in high school, during Max's senior year, he befriended a young woman named Haley, to which he developed a close bond with. They never dated, and unfortunately for Max, he was deep within the friend zone. But nonetheless, Max would secretly lust for her. Max, in fact, was incredibly attached to Haley. As they graduated together, Max would unveil his secret plan to win over his crush. You see, it wasn't just his videos that were annoyingly pretentious and cringe-inducing. But even at a young age, he did things that were incredibly weird. I met Max in... 2012, 2013, while in high school, we were co-workers at a local movie theater in Wiley, Texas, called B&B Theaters. Um, we didn't really speak that much while working there, but he was good friends with most of my co-workers, um, but he only worked there for a short period of time. We were classmates in a forensic science class our senior year um, in 2013, 2014. Um, for example... Max would continuously tell Haley that he wanted to be a firefighter or a fireman. That was his passion. That was what he wanted to do after high school. He was committed to it. But you see, Max had no intentions of putting out fires, unless you were talking about the fires in his real life. The term firefighter or fireman was actually code word for him wanting to be a rapper because he wanted to spit hot flames. Something that um, I used to do a lot is uh, rap. Oh, really? Oh, no I, shit. I, oh, my God. No shit. Yes. Really? I won't. I won't do it oh. now. Maybe like. <laughs> oh. no. you, Please. You started it. Maybe. Uh, maybe next time. But, um, <laughs> I, I I prided myself on being a, a rapper. Really. And I felt I felt like I did pretty good. Yeah. yeah that's that's, that's awesome. Cool. After graduation during the summer of 2014, Max would give Haley a notebook that he explained was the reasoning behind the firefighter code word. Haley would read what was his notebook, and she was shocked to find writings about her and how much he admired her, while well, he explained in the writings that he absolutely loathed the boyfriend she was dating at the time. Max would allegedly write about how this boyfriend didn't deserve her, and Max even apparently wrote up a whole plan on how he would extract the boyfriend out of the picture. Haley described Max's writings as thorough and violent, and just the whole thing creeped her out. It was a huge swing and a miss by Mr. Romantic Mama Max. Don't write weird rap diaries to your crush about how you want the killer boyfriend. <laughs> It just doesn't work. It just don't do it. Ladies don't like it when you say you're gonna kill their man. <laughs> Haley would attempt to break away from Max as she began attending the University of North Texas. But Max was unrelenting and continuous as he texted her and tried to stay in touch and wanting to hang out. Haley would try to stay distant from Max, but somehow he found her dorm room and just showed up out of nowhere. Mama Max was no quitter and stayed vigilant, and soon Haley would give in. As after breaking up with her boyfriend, she would respond to one of Max's tech, which allowed them to reconnect. But eventually, she would find another boyfriend, and it wasn't Max. It actually was Anthony, aka Magnetar. Anthony and Haley had known each other for quite some time. In fact, Haley even went to Anthony for advice on Max, to which Anthony had told her to cut off all contact. But Haley felt sorry for Max and didn't want to hurt his feelings. In October of 2014, Haley alleges that Max set up a meeting between Max's sister and her for networking purposes, which 
Max's sister had a similar job to what Haley was going to university for. However, this was an apparent ruse. Max's sister was nowhere in sight as they met in a hotel. And it was just him and Haley. This is when things get dark, as Haley alleges that Max had booked a room for them, and this freaked Haley out to the point where she basically froze. She claimed that every time she tried to leave the hotel room, he would basically block the doorway and stop her. Haley also claimed that she was held against her will for hours and wasn't even allowed to leave to get tampons. She would eventually fall asleep, only to wake up to Max massaging her back and his fingers inside her shorts. 10 a.m. the next morning, she would finally leave, claiming she had to get to class. This was a very peculiar predicament. I'll admit the story does seem weird at points, and yet things would get even weirder as Max's his mental health was obviously not on solid ground, and the foundations were really starting to crack. You see, Max would find out that Anthony and Haley were dating and began to obsessively text Haley. Haley alleges he also tried to show up at a work, but eventually Max enlisted into the army and went to basic training in Arizona. Early one morning, while in basic training, Max would text Anthony as well as tag him on Facebook with the words, thanks Anthony along with a video of Max cutting himself and attempting suicide. Haley and Anthony allegedly had to call the police over this and inform them of the situation, dispatching a wellness check to Max, who would obviously survive the suicide attempt. Both Haley and Magnetar would make reports to the police about Mama Max's harassment towards her, as well as a report on the hotel room incident. Max would continue to try and get in touch with Haley over the next few years. He would also send an apology to Anthony. Though apparently he would grow aggravated with Anthony after he apparently did not subscribe to his YouTube channel. He would also reference Haley in his videos, even showing her name in a short snippet that goes by so fast, you gotta slow it down to see it. We didn't hear from Max again until the summer when he wrote me like a seven or eight page letter saying how much he regretted joining the military. I was in the United States Army before I was discharged for attempting to commit suicide. As far as I know, his military career was only a few months long and ended with that, that suicide video or attempted suicide video. He told me about how he loved me and wished we were together. I didn't respond to it, nor did I keep it. I burned it in my grandma's backyard, actually. This is an emotional roller coaster. You know, I, I, I like know most of this. It gets rough. Anyway, let's talk about the other ones. The rest of the video is a more detailed version of Olivia and Lucy's stories, which I've already gone through the bullet points, but I gotta admit, their stories do seem a bit off. Uh, Paulina's story is absent. Uh, Lucy's story is more concise and gets to the point, but nonetheless, not a lot of the evidence shown for all of these hefty accusations, especially for things like sexual assault. And Olivia, well, uh, Olivia's the worst story in this group. She starts it off like she's a YouTuber welcoming viewers to her channel, Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be calling Mama Max a rapist. I can't, I can't include that line. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Ali Wing, and unfortunately, I am one of Max's exes. How did we meet? So, I had a friend, and he doesn't want me to say his name, but we had a mutual friend, and then our mutual friend invited me to go hang out with them. And it was me, my brother, my sister, and my friend and Max and we all went to Max's apartment and we met him through a friend but uh our mutual friend wasn't friends with him much longer than I was so he didn't really know him that well himself okay and then um and I never had a boyfriend before I, w I just turned 18 um when we met I was only a month 18 and and I never had a boyfriend before. I never even like held hands with the boy. So I, and when I had a little crush on Max, he could obviously tell. I mean, like we were hanging out. We just started hanging out kind of. I don't know how it really happened. I don't remember how it happened. We just started hanging out because of our mutual friend. And then one day he came over and it was just us two. And we were in his car. And then he kind of just went in for a kiss. And then from there, we just hung out a lot. Uh, listen, I'm not one to start tone policing, but my God, is this whole thing way off. Also, I gotta be honest, Olivia's just a really sussy lady, and I'll get to why later. 
Uh, but that being said, uh, my point is, is that there wasn't a lot of evidence shown to really expose Max as this disgusting deviant. I'll admit that numerous ex-girlfriends coming out with stories against him is definitely a cause for concern, especially in his field of video. In fact, the video states that there is a total of seven women with stories. However, we've seen situations like this before where a collection of women come out with their stories, but a lack of evidence comes off more like angry ex-girlfriends. Uh, at the very least, you could chalk it up to Max being a horrible boyfriend, and I think we can agree with that. The Haley stuff, however, is something that has merit, and even then, the story is pretty crazy with the hotel room. But what gives Haley's story more credibility is that some of it was confirmed by Mama Max himself. Now, Magnetar's video on Mama Max would get taken down due to Magnetar showing Max's full docs and driver's license. Now, Magnetar argued that he was trying to make a point because Max proclaimed in Craig Beckett's video that anyone could search his name and find no evidence of any such police report. But that was because Max had apparently changed his name. Nonetheless, you can't be going around showing full names and personal information and expect for a video to stay up. So Magnetar would re-edit the video since it's a private information and re-upload the video on July 28, 2022. One day later, on July 29th, 2022, Mama Max would upload his Mama Max's response to the allegations. Okay, so I want to preface this part of the video. Max could easily be lying in it. I, I would not be shocked if he was. Um, there are points where the dude says stuff like, damn, go off, sis, like a hundred times in the video. And it's, it's really annoying. But damn, go off, sis. Uh, now, that being said, did Mama Max have a reasonable explanation for all of his accusers? To be honest, for the most part, yeah. With Paulina, who was absent from the exposed video, he showed screenshots and evidence of her mental health declining, as well as screenshots that very much were the opposite of what she was accusing him of, and even more screenshots that at the very least showed Max was a decent boyfriend to Paulina in that span of time. For Olivia, he again showed the recorded phone call on which Olivia and Max talked. And Olivia did not seem like she was talking to her abuser, but more like she was just talking to an ex-boyfriend. Although, he only showed a small snippet of the call, which could be taken out of context. In the description, he posted a link to the full call. The call is very standoffish, but in my opinion, Olivia comes off as really weird. For example, Max brings up how they were still broken up. Olivia was sending him nudes. Olivia then denies it, but then says it won't matter anyway because she's naked all the time on the internet, which I'm going to be honest with you, that's a lot of foreshadowing. Again, more to come with Olivia. Stay tuned. At one point during the call, Olivia even asked Max what his astrology sign is. She also made a joke asking for 10k to never talk about Max again, and was frustrated by the fan edits being made about her, which is why she started making TikToks against Max to begin with. When it came to Max taking advantage of Olivia while she was sleeping, it was explained in the call that this was a consensual act in which Max would have permission to wake up Olivia with sex. And there was a safe word and everything. For the record, Olivia did not remember a safe word, but did remember the phrase. I'm gonna read that quote. <sighs> Okay, okay, I'm about to read that. Okay, Olivia did not remember a safe word, but did remember the phrase, quote, are we going to be rapey or romantic? Max also recalled that Olivia would tell him to stop and that she was too tired. Max would obey and cease the action. Then the next morning, Olivia would be annoyed that Max didn't keep going. Again, for the record, Olivia does not remember saying that. In the call, Max would tell Olivia that if she wants to keep making TikToks about him, that it's her freedom of speech to do so. To which Olivia replied with a joke about taking it too far and saying that Max tried to kill her. And uh, yeah, uh, Olivia is definitely a trustworthy source here. Mama Max then goes on into another accuser named Sarah who did not come out publicly in the video. And is someone I don't know much about, but regardless, Max accused her of rape. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is 67 pages, Diesel, this is 67 pages. <laughs> For Lucy, Max claimed that Lucy lied about her age and that when they had met, she was only two months away from turning 18. He also points out that the age of consent in Texas and Tasmania is both 17. Max also stated that he did not sexually assault Lucy and that they stayed together for four more months after she got back home, to which he would then break up with her. Again, all of this is he said, she said. But now we get to the main event. Haley, and now with this one, there's a huge twist. So Max concedes to obsessing over Haley in high school and while in the military. Max explained that he ceased all communication with Haley after his apology to Anthony, but that the aggressors in the situation were actually Magnetar and Haley, 
as they were the ones trying to put out a video and collect information while Max had simply avoided communication. He then goes out to point out that Haley, although did not reciprocate his feelings for her. So Max concedes to obsessing over Haley in high school and while in the military, Max explained that he ceased all communication with Haley after his apology to Anthony. But the aggressors in the situation were actually Magnetar and Haley, as they were the ones trying to put out a video and collect information while Max had simply avoided communication. Haley is not one of my exes. Haley has never abused me. Haley is a young woman that I fell for in high school and that I obsessed over in uh, while uh, during my time in the military. Um, this is when I was 18. I made decisions that I obviously regret. But uh, with that said, Haley is painting a very different picture of our relationship together uh, during these times to make me look more like a creep, obviously. That is always the, the uh, name of the game with them, I guess. He then goes out to point out that Haley, although did not reciprocate his feelings for her, should be more inclined for Max's attention when she was on the outs with her boyfriend. Max then goes into his whole notebook ordeal and proclaims that he did not write anything aggressive towards the boyfriend, but was actually talking about a man who had allegedly abused Haley, that Haley had confided to Max about. This apparently was who he was talking about in the notebook. Also, he decided to actually dox the alleged person. Yeah, he just put the full name and picture right in there. Max again conceded that Haley was distant before she went to university, but at one point they hung out and cuddled together in bed. He also conveyed that he did not find her dorm and that Haley had given him the address. In a nutshell, Max explained that he was very obsessive with Haley, but that there were times where she actually liked that about him. Maybe he was insinuating that it appealed to her ego, but he also stated that there were times where she would outright chastise Max for being like this, which I believe is Max trying to explain that Haley was sending out mixed signals because saying that Haley was wishy-washy and that this confused this <laughs> this, this uh, wonderfully just uh, autistic YouTuber. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be lying if I said, you know, man, with these internet boys, with these internet YouTubers, be straightforward with them, okay? Don't send mixed signals. Do not, do, they can't read them. Look at Mama Max. Do you think he's a guy who deals in, in the gray zone? No, he sees the world in a very chaotic way. You need to, you need to be very clear. That I can see. I can see his, his brain. It just, it functions on, on a different level. A stupid one. Anyway, when it came to the hotel room, Max explained that everything was consensual. Haley was not afraid for her life or scared and she could have left at any time and that they actually did leave to get tampons. Max revealed that the two flirted with each other and cuddled together in the bed, that nothing uncomfortable had happened. Max would continue to dissect Haley's testimony, claiming, she had dates wrong, mixed up situations, and very much alluded to her either misremembering or twisting the narrative to paint Max in the worst light possible. But he did confirm the suicide attempt and sending Anthony the footage of it, which by all means truly paints Max as an unhinged person in the moment. Max then tries to paint Magnetar in a selfish light, as in Haley's video, he portrayed as a caring person who called in the wellness check when he sent the imagery of Max's attempting suicide, but in Max's video, Max would show screenshots of Magnetar completely freaking out and basically telling Max to never contact him or Haley again, which honestly is a reasonable re like reaction to being sent a guy who's obsessed with your girlfriend saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. It's not really unreasonable for him to act that way. Okay, but we're, we're not done because there is a really interesting moment in this video. Uh, because Max has a special part for the uploader of the exposed video, Magnetar, Anthony, a.k.a. Haley's boyfriend, a.k.a. the man Max hated with a passion because he was dating Haley. Max would bring out testimony from his sister to show that Max was decent to all the women that had exposed him, as well as giving testimony that Haley and Max seemed to be very close and confirmed they would cuddle together in his room. But also, this sister would bring up Anthony as well and claim that there were some serious allegations against him. Yes, at the end of this Mama Max video, Max pulls an Uno reverse card on Magnetar and proclaims that Anthony Magnetar is actually the pedo. Anyone who knows Max in high school, he was a nice guy to everyone. He was nice to everyone. Oh, he why? never would kidnap someone. Uh, then why <laughs> does- Let alone Haley, his friend, and she definitely was not kidnapped. Um, then why does Anthony hate me? Anthony Field, Haley's boyfriend, 
Magnetar on YouTube, the one who published this video on me. He then shows screenshots from an anonymous source proclaiming that Anthony would send nudes and other sexual videos to her while she was underage. None of this can be confirmed except by Max's sister. So there's nothing concrete here, just testimony. But it seems more like whether the accusation is true or not, Max is giving Anthony a little taste of his own medicine. It shows how vindictive Max can be, and from what I understand, this wasn't the first time Max had threatened these accusations. He had these in his back pocket for a while. Max would expose Anthony's full name, his face, and also allude to other accusers against him. This could be a way for Max to get Anthony and Haley to stop talking about him, or the allegations could be completely bullshit. I mean, honestly, with this, who fucking knows? So Max came back swinging with his own video, and the man, <laughs> it, was, it was a hell of a counter. Now, uh, things are about to get even more complicated as the timeline's gonna jump all over the place. So you're gonna need to bear with me here. So first and foremost, Mama Max and his description for his videos defending him would thank a few people, including Craig Beckett and Angry Slug. All right, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on Angry Slug, but I'm just, he's a clout demon, okay? He's a self-confessed doxer who at one point was able to slip into Chris Hansen's good graces when trying to expose Onision. Uh, he was then exposed of being just an absolute complete retard, making false allegations that Nicholas the Oreo was in the KKK after being trolled by Aiden Projects, who I think was a child at the time. He also threatened uh, to strike one of Augie's videos and attempted to debate Augie on a live stream, only to run away and claim that his power was out. It would later be revealed that he was lying about this. Slug is a socially inept doofus who tries to suck up to any clout he could possibly find. He's been a nuisance to the commentary community for quite some time, and he never goes away. He's like a cockroach. He's always been there. The commentary community could dissolve in flames, and Slug would still be there, falsely accusing randos of being pedophiles. Now, when it came out that Slug was not only thanked in Max's videos, but was part of the pedo hunting team, people began to relay to Max what Slug was all about. And eventually, he was taken off the team. But Slug would eventually return, and of course we're gonna get to that. <laughs> now this would happen a month later, after the Mama Max video had been uploaded, but the book on Beckett was officially closed when it was revealed that he had been sexting a 17-year-old while Beckett was in his late 20s. And not only that, it was revealed that when they had begun talking, she was actually only 16. Now the accuser and Craig are both British, and in the country of England, it is illegal to have sex with a 17-year-old. However, the two did exchange nudes, which included an alleged cum tribute from Mr. Beckett himself, which is, of course, illegal. Craig sent me a video of him <clears throat> to a photo of me. Here's the screenshot from my Twitter data that shows he did, in fact, send me a video. Evidence of a video being sent. Here's Emmy saying to Craig, someone really wants to see them. He says, maybe, winky face. She warns him that she is fully undressed. To which he says, I will prepare my raging... Oof, ugh, read the screen there. This is a really important point. I don't feel like enough people have stressed this enough during this situation. But uh, not only did Craig break the law, but throughout the duration of the time that he spoke to this young girl, he encouraged her to break the law. Here he says, good, good, but enjoy yourself. Take plenty of pics and videos. And uh, yeah, he was, he was done for after that, disappearing from the internet, never to be heard from again. In fact, the last we ever heard of Craig is when his former ally, Mama Max, got a hold of him and tweeted out a picture of Craig Beckett with the word prey written on his forehead. And that's prey as in like the thing predators eat rather than um, like prey as in Jesus. Uh, and then uh, Max would later come out with a music video called Prey, so it was possible that Max was using Craig Beckett to plug his song. Uh, he would also express his frustration with the befriending Craig Beckett on a live stream. And uh, just, just to be fair, uh, the one who exposed all of this about Craig Beckett was Angry Slug, broken clock right twice a day. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be a good one. Okay, so here's another side note I gotta mention real quick. It's about Edwin's Generation. He's a commentary YouTuber who's known for making videos on hashtag MeToo scandals like Die Antwoord, Marilyn Manson, Onision, Davi Vanity. And Edwin had his eyes set on possibly making a video on Mama Max. 
and the whole thing kind of blew up in his face. Edwin took up the mantle for Mama Max detractors and accusers. He would frequently do live streams criticizing Mama Max as well as interviewing the accusers and platforming them so they could tell their story. He was committed to researching for a video on his channel and even at one point had a conversation with Max himself. However, everything would fall apart later on when a massive drama imploded involving the Keemstar show and Edwin's generation among others. Now, I'm not going to go into it, but basically it led Edwin to getting fully canceled and with that, Olivia also threw salt on the wound when she would come out with her own expose on Edwin. So the story goes that Edwin would have Olivia on multiple times to tell her side of the story. But behind the scenes, Edwin and Olivia would start to grow closer. And sometime during the fall of 2022, Edwin had realized the two of them had began to have more sexually charged conversations and became flirty with one another. He uh, could not continue his video on Mama Max because it would be a conflict of interest and would prove an inherent bias so the video was dropped altogether. Later, after Edwin was exposed on the Keemstar show for something that would take hours to explain. <laughs> what did you guys like to know? <laughs> oh God, I, Olivia would come out and say that Edwin had, well, fulfilled himself to her while they were on a video call. To um, say everything, cause just to say everything and um, the, the call with Edwin where he got funky, um, I was, to be fair, I was drunk and I was feeling sexy that day and I was like going on Instagram live and like getting half naked and calling people and I did call him on regular FaceTime and I, <laughs> I just, a very drunk and very felt sexy so I did um, take my shirt off so there's that. The irony that Olivia, the one of the original accusers, would be a part of Edwin's downfall was not lost on anyone. It should be noted that Olivia claimed that nothing weird or like rapey happened and that the video call was consensual. She did say to Xylee Gets Real, however, that Edwin talked about flying her out while he was still working on the Mama Max story. But I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Olivia is not a reliable narrator, okay? I don't want to badmouth these accusers, but she had no business being up there. She had a bad relationship, that's it. And she has this weird ability to find a spotlight because she's done it multiple times. She even at one point tried to e-date Bo Blacks, another commentary YouTuber. She was literally flirting with all the commentary orbiters. It's really fucking weird. O Olivia would also flip-flop back onto Edwin's side when Edwin would try and make his comeback. But when she was invited to do an interview to tell her side of the story on Edwin's platform, she decided to renege and did not show up. When all this came out, it kind of killed any sort of credibility for the Mama Max detractors and the story was basically just dead in the water. Mama Max would go on later to say that what happened really sucked and that he loved most of the women that had stories about him and that he wanted to start a family with them, but wasn't the greatest boyfriend and that was the result of mental illnesses from both sides clashing together and creating a vitriolic and toxic environment. The accusers themselves were somewhat left to fester on their own island while Max continued to make content and oh boy, did he make some content. Okay, recent update. Uh, Haley would go on Chud Logic's stream where she refuted Max's claims of everything being consensual and denied cuddling with Max. She stands by her side of the story and basically Max is capping, according to her. That's not going to be the last update in this video. <laughs> okay, so again, uh, timeline is all over the place right now, but let's get back on track because now we got to return to Tommy C. Let me ask you a question, dear viewer. Let's say you're a big YouTuber who hunts pedophiles and you've just been accused of horrible things and had to go make a video defending yourself in an attempt to save your reputation. What would you do next? Well, if your answer was to jump right into another drama with a channel that you completely dwarf, well, then you'd be right. Max would go back to making content and would put out another pedophile hunting video. However, he would dictate the first 15 minutes of his video to none other than Tommy C, the man who went on a live stream to verbally defecate all over the Max. The funny thing to me is Max would say publicly, he hated getting into drama, he couldn't stand it, and did not like doing it. I do not get sick of covering pedophiles. That's what I have fun doing. I would rather be in my hole really? hunting pedophiles. That is, that's what brings me life. I hate when I have to do this shit and start stupid ass drama just to make people give a shit. 
you know, cause when you, uh, especially when you're so fucking pissed off, like you hear, you have to hear the screams of children being raped to death and you have to witness puppies being skinned alive, trying to hobble away. Like this shit becomes so goddamn easy. Like I don't give a fuck anymore. Yet here he was fighting a channel with less than 50k subscribers. Not only that, he parodies him, creating his own character in an attempt to mock Tommy C called Mommy Z. Actually, you know what? Before we even watch it, let's take a caller. Hi, you're live on the air. I pick pedophiles. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Okay. I absolutely agree. Thank you so no, much but, for but calling me. I am a So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now, this came out of nowhere. Uh, Tommy's stream on Max was in December of 2021. The video was uploaded in August of 2022. So again, in a video titled This is what happened to a child predator on TikTok, Max begins his newest rendition of find the pedo by introducing a parody character called Mommy Z, in which he completely reenacts the famous Tommy C live stream, portraying Mommy Z reacting to Mama Max and taking callers. The cope in this intro is just hilarious, especially when you realize that he's spending time on a YouTube channel that averages 300 concurrent viewers a stream. Look, Tommy's had a great career. He's a hilarious streamer. He's been around for a long time. You should check him out. But let's be honest. When it comes to relevancy, he's not at the top of the list. Here's Mama Max giving Tommy an obscene amount of attention. That's uh, not so bad, right? I mean, he made a funny little skit. Now it's time to get into the actual content and hunt some pedos, right? Max keeps going. Max would then reply to Tommy's clips from his stream, only referring to Tommy with his name with the name number four blah 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 blah, which at the time was Tommy's subscriber count. He would then showcase his intellect by proclaiming that Tommy had fallen into his trap. I'm gonna have to upset all of my fellow creators. That was a prediction, and you fell right into it, as predictable as you all are. What I did not foresee, however, was when you accidentally aligned with actual pedophiles along the way. This is the, the most impressive tweet on this so far. Uh, it, it is it, 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 the only guy with balls, if you ask me. And B, Vito's got the ball to crack this joke. I pick pedophiles. <laughs> I pick pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he gave me a choice. <laughs> One week later. Vito said this, having basic empathy for non-defending pedophiles will ultimately lead to less child abuse. Not offending means that we understand breaking the laws is a no-no, all right? There's nothing quite as poetic as the blind stupidity of the commentary community. And when I confronted these hypocritical little contrarians on their own bullshit, they would not let me speak to them. Sure. Well, Max is in the chat trying to bait you to bring him on. Oh, he's saying, wish we could have talked like adults, man. Could talk like, like yeah, adults? You didn't make a DMs. fucking video like a fucking adult. That a, any, no, anybody other than a fucking child That's could be, money, couldn't I be. I mean, this is literally made for stupid people. Stupid people and- Oh my. I didn't know making a video like an adult meant reacting to Twitter drama and screaming at the camera like a whiny little baby. Max basically said, you activated my trap card. However, the most egregious part of this expose on Tommy is that Max, the pedophile hunter, tries to paint number 46,853 as a man who protects pedophiles. The exact same thing he was trying to do to YouTube. He is doing to a smaller streamer on a channel with an audience committed to hating and hunting pedophiles. There's this cool new term a lot of content creators are using these days, and it's called pedo jacketing. Uh, it basically means when someone tries to paint someone as a pedo due to making an edgy joke or an innocent action in an attempt to harm their reputation, Max basically does this to Tommy by explaining that because he had Vito on the show, who Max proclaims is a pedophile and Mr. Girl, that this means Tommy is inherently related to pedophiles and mingles with them. Max basically slanders Vito, which which, you know, I gotta be honest, it's kind of fair because Vito has said some stupid things uh, and his name also rhymes with pedo, which makes it really easy. You know, when you're a pedophile hunter on YouTube, might not be a great idea to throw around that title all willy-nilly. Uh, people might take you at your word. I mean, especially if you're spending weeks and weeks of research on actual pedophile, but then you point your finger at edgy comedians who have made some stupid jokes and have dumb, 
done all these dumb things on the internet. Is that really a good idea? In fact, I think Max would agree with me later on in his Q and A live streams, he would say this. Like telling my audience to call people pedophiles. I don't like people throwing around the word pedophile. Like it doesn't mean anything. I don't like that shit. Uh, and if you're doing that, please stop. Like people can disagree with us. It's okay. Like that doesn't immediately mean they're a pedophile. And I get, I get why you're doing it. Like someone says stupid shit on the internet. You want to call them. Oh, okay. You're a pedo. I get that, but it's not, we shouldn't just be throwing around the word. Like it doesn't mean anything. I call someone a pedophile when they are behaving like a pedophile, when they do actions that is indicative of a pedophile, when they talk like a pedophile, when, and I do not make a video on them until I have verifiable proof that they are a pedophile. You know, that's why I get, that's why I have these long conversations with Wayne and him talking and him, you know, describing what he wants to do to a 14 year old girl. That's why I have Zach Haddad, like put, do a f fucking finger thing on his nose. So I know this is the guy that I am making a video on. Needless to say, this is a very hazardous activity that is completely irresponsible for a content creator like Max. And if Vito had actual money, it could probably lead to Max being sued into oblivion. Uh, luckily, Vito is poor and relies on Dick Masterson for a paycheck. Speaking of, uh, let's talk about the other one, Mr. Girl. Now, Mr. Girl may allegedly be a pedophile. I don't really fucking know. I'm not making a Mr. Girl video. Mr. Girl called into Tommy's show for about 15 minutes. That's it. Please teach me your ways, washed up commentary channel number 46,853. Anyway, I can see a simple conversation is asking for too much when you're busy inviting more pedophiles onto your show. Mr. Girl, you're a pedophile! <laughs> you're a pedophile! It you know, here's you. the thing about you, like, I, I, I want to like you. Um, because oh, I, 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 I already like you. Oh, that's great. Well, I can't say it was the wrong choice because your friends that did end up talking to me, let's just say they did not like the humiliation. Yeah, because of this, Tommy is associated with pedophiles. I, that's completely ridiculous. That's pure cope. I mean, Tommy gave you criticism, albeit it was very visceral and uh, his verbiage is pretty intense. Nonetheless, it was still criticism. Yet Max wants to pay Tommy in the worst light possible because of it. Best part about this though, is that throughout this segment on Tommy C, a bunch of QR codes would flash on the screen. And when activating these QR codes, a bunch of paragraphs would pop up, which is nothing but Max coping in the worst possible way. So let's look at some funny ones. Hey, shoo, shoo, shoo. It'll be okay, little guy. You don't have to scream. Let's use our inside voices. Hugs you, nuzzles you. I just added that in. Uh, just tell us what's wrong. Did someone hurt you? Gently rubs your shoulders. What is this, an AO3 post? Whoa, hey, simmer down there, buddy. What's with all the hostility? I never said you or anyone else looked like a creepy pedophile, let alone a non-creepy looking pedophile, did I? Is that why you're so mad? Do you think I called you a pedo? Well, I never did, kisses you on the forehead. There, does that feel better? I feel like you can say it without saying it. You know what I mean? Yikes. Can't think of a yikes without thinking of tipster. <laughs> yikes, why even say something like that? Don't you have one or two kids? Now hold on there, Turbo. I know you like to take everything I say out of context, but I'm not saying you touch them or anything. I know you're not a pedophile, and I'm gonna say that out loud later so everyone knows. But what I'm getting is that maybe people are calling you a pedophile, not me, because you say and do dumb things sometimes. Yeah, maybe we should think before speaking, shouldn't we? It's okay, fella. Pats you on the back compassionately. You gain 100 XP from this interaction and one skill point in common sense. So incredibly dorky. And I literally run a coffee company that makes D&D themed coffee called Mana Potion Coffee. And you can go to manapotioncoffee.com and use code D10 at checkout to buy our coffee. Well, kisses you on forehead. You gain one skill point in common sense. <laughs> Okay, there's so many here that honestly, I think Max should just fuck Tommy. Max is the bottom, but I, th I think we all knew that. He's got a twink death is going to hit him hard. It will hit him hard. Hits him all hard. Not as hard as Tommy's going to hit him from behind. So Max would then later go on to take another victory lap and proclaim that they did exactly what Mama Max wanted them to do because they talked about the video, therefore it got the word out. Wow, Mama Max, you mean the commentary channels actually went and gave 
commentary on your video? Wow, no, no way. That's like only thing they do aside from yell about the same three arguments all the time. Uh, yeah, they did exactly what I wanted them to do when they decided to talk about my video. Even though they talk about my videos for a living, I made them do this. Like, bruh, come on. Tommy was actually on vacation while this was all going down. Now, I don't know if Max did this on purpose, but if that was the case, well then, holy shit, this guy is terminally online. But I'll show good faith and say it was just a coincidence. Yeah, we'll just say it was good faith and, uh, you know, coincidence. Uh, not to turn Tommy into a victim, because he's not. He's a big boy who deals with this type of shit all the time. But nonetheless, Tommy's live stream on Mama Max, as well as recent streams at the time, would be bombarded by hate comments, proclaiming Tommy as a pedo supporter. This is more than likely due to Mama Max's fan base being who they are. When Tommy returned though, he refrained from firing back immediately. Tommy decided to wait for the right moment. Well, no, in reality, Tommy wanted to make a video response, but then realized that it would take too much research, so he decided to do a live stream in January of 2023. In the stream, Tommy pointed out how inept Mama Max was, and that he has no business doing this, and also has an obligation to update his community when someone is arrested. He also shows that Max showing information of people that aren't pedophiles but are related to them could get them killed. Actively protecting a known child predator, I would lose not a second of sleep if someone were to do something about him as well. That could get somebody killed, an innocent person killed. I don't know if he's protecting them or not, and I don't think there's any way to take you seriously. I don't think you have any credibility. You won't even name the people you supposedly caught. I don't know if he's protecting his son or not illegally. I know more than likely 99.9% .9 of fathers, if their son came to his dad, I didn't do it. They probably do what they normally would do. That's just what people do. I don't know this guy's situation. I don't know nothing. I know you're not qualified. You can't even handle the fucking getting through the army. You're not qualified putting this guy's docs out there. Tommy would then speculate that Max is an egomaniac. And I gotta be honest, I don't think that's much of a stretch. In fact, in this business, he's probably right on the money. Speaking of money, Tommy showcases Mama Max's Patreon that has over 2,500 patrons, which means he's making a lot of dough, to which Tommy speculates that Max may be grifting to feed his financial desire. His audience wants Max to hunt pedophiles. So Max is going to hunt pedos and he's going to make a lot of cash doing it. Then at the end, Tommy would drop a bomb. You see, a lot of people can criticize Max attractors because they can say he's helping victims or you're not a victim of SA, grooming, etc. You have no room to talk. Well, on this live stream, Tommy C reveals that he is in fact a victim of child molestation and points out that he has every right to criticize Bomb Max for the way he makes his videos as well as speculating on it being a possible grift. I, I get unbelievably upset when with, with, when accusations are thrown around when it comes to the sexual variety or, or criminal or sexual um, variety I've always it's, it's been my big thing Alex um, you, you go through the list it's the one big thing and I'm gonna tell you exactly why um, that this is always bothered me so much and why I switched from comedy and I switched to this particular um, um, direction because I'm a victim of child molestation. I was molested by my babysitter and I got lucky. I had a couple of drinks with my neighbor across the street a couple of years later when I was a teenager and he full on got raped by the same guy. Neither of us had the balls because we were children to say anything and by then it was just too late. So I get really, really upset when stuff like this happens. Don't believe me? Think I'm just saying it? Well, Dave knows about it, and he's known about it for like 10 years. And he's one of my closest army buddies. And uh, if you want to sit there and, and, and deny me, which I don't care, say that I'm making the shit up, why would a guy like me running a comedy show just open him up to some of the, the most uh, offensive, which I fully expect, pedo jokes that I'm going to get? I don't care. I care more about people not taking you seriously than making fun of me getting molested as a kid. A lot more. I'm 46 years old. I'm pretty confident with my sexuality. It's really not a big deal. 
And who knows? Maybe like Matt's leg, there'd be a few funny jokes in there. Tommy would continue to receive hate by Mama Max fans as they would flood his live streams on Max as well as his clipped video. Max would go quiet and he wouldn't respond publicly except for one of those statements that he made in the Q&A live stream. Max would just go back to making content. He put out a video on AI being used for child slavery in which he advertises a three hour documentary he's making about the subject of the weaponization of AI. But later in than a year, Within a few months, something very peculiar would happen. He would begin to create a series that at this moment is kind of imploding on itself. And I don't know what will actually happen, but as of right now, I think we're witnessing the true downfall of Mama Max. So um, this story is still unfolding in front of our eyes, so not all the information is out there yet. There are plenty of misgivings about Max but he very much could possibly pull this all together in the end. Who knows? But at the moment, things are not looking good for Max Stryker. Within the last few months, Mama Max's channel has plummeted through a downward spiral that I don't think Max has ever experienced before. And the worst part of it is, there are potential victims that could be caught in the middle of all of this. On October 27th, 2023, Mama Max would upload a video called Brainwash Your Favorite Influencers, in which Max teases his next alleged subject in this weird, twisted, pedophile hunting series. But aside from the video, what was most noticeable is that Max changed the name of his channel to God Cult, which led some fans to think his channel had been hacked. In the 10 minute teaser, Max insinuates that the subject will revolve around the occult, who are enticing minors into their insidious and carnal fellowship. Max would introduce Spencer, a young woman who allegedly became entrapped in the snare of a devilish cult, which is led by the name of a man who believes himself to be a werewolf god while she was but 16 years old. Max then produces an image of Camden Gerard Davis, the alleged werewolf in question. <laughs> Max would provoke Davis with the threat of Leviathans are coming for you. Max would then make another call to arms, again requesting famous YouTubers to assist him. YouTubers like PewDiePie, Lex Friedman, Mr. Beast, Joe Rogan, Philip DeFranco, H3H3, Anthony Fantasno, and Corpse Husband. Max then advertised his Patreon, to which he claimed he was raising funds for Spencer so that she could legally pursue Camden, as well as the law agencies that allegedly failed her. He also used this video to call arms to other potential victims of this werewolf god that if they see the video and wish to reach out, they can do so. Max would link a video in the description which led to Spencer's channel, which provided a four hour long podcast of all the context. So for an audience to really get the story, they'd have to sit down for four hours and watch all of it. Some of the allegations include Camden attempting to pimp Spencer out, sexual assault, attempted murder, being heavily manipulative, revenge porn, sexually interacting with girls as young as 13 years old, and at one point, he would pee on the women as well to mark his territory because he's a werewolf. Listen, if you want all the context, then I'd suggest listening to the four hour podcast yourself really to get a good grasp on these allegations that are being thrown at Camden. But for most people, they don't really have any idea what these allegations even are. Now, normally Max would just do an in-depth documentary on Camden, which would create buzz and would transition into surrounding approval for Spencer and the other victims for Max's audience. But this time he tried something very different and it basically has failed. You see, Max was very vague in his original video. And not only that, he copied his previous pattern of trying to provoke other YouTubers to talk about it instead of letting the content rest on his shoulders. The substance of the video should be what gets other YouTubers to have a dialogue about it. But this video is just another pestering cope fest that almost seems to use Spencer as a shield. For this reason, this new project did not go as planned as Max would actually lose subscribers due to changing the name of his channel. Also, the comments would not be too kind towards him. In fact, they were so negative, Max was forced to turn off the comments on his video. So on November 11th, 2023, Max, being the egotistical man that he is, decided to make another video replying to the hate comment. The video is one massive cope fest where Max places himself on a pedestal as the heroic hunter who's trying to do good in the world and the comments are just, gelatinous germs that are purposefully misunderstanding Max's intentions. He literally spends almost 30 minutes attacking comments. Unsubscribed from you today. Couldn't even make it past the first five minutes of this video. It's such a shame that you've fallen so hard from grace, especially since I've enjoyed many of your Life Sucks videos. But ever since you quit Life Sucks, you've been going downhill, saying really dumb shit. 
causing controversy and drama, and being a cynical asshole. It's honestly unbelievable. It's unfortunate that you've decided to unsubscribe after just five minutes into a video that tackles grave issues affecting the lives of real children. Your reluctance to engage with a video of this kind indicates your threshold for confronting reality. If you consider my advocacy for the well-being of children to be saying dumb shit, then perhaps you are someone who warrants closer scrutiny. But feel free to clarify, because I too would like to know what dumb shit you think I'm saying. Mom. If the Tommy C situation doesn't convince you how fragile Max's ego is, then this definitely would. Listen here on how he treats his this comment about PewDiePie. I feel like it's kind of a low blow asking PewDiePie to come back to address stuff like this when he stated that he's quitting YouTube to focus on his family. But ultimately, I understand your point. I appreciate that you ultimately understand my point. That also means you'll understand the magnitude of the issues we're confronting leaves no room for silence. If PewDiePie can come back and talk about Sniper Wolf, then he and others can talk about the nightmarish realities that millions of children are enduring every day and how our collective inaction is failing them on a global scale. Every influencer, regardless of their current engagement level, has a platform that could be used to drive significant change. There is an array of methods to address these issues in a way that is both impactful and accessible to their audience. As people with the power to influence public opinion, we are not doing enough. During the video, Max even copes out about how the previous video was the worst performing video on his channel. And I mean, yeah, no shit. You changed the name of your channel, you didn't provide substantial context, and you begged YouTubers to talk about it for the majority of it. Not only does he complain about his video not doing well in the algorithm, but he also talks about how a lot of the YouTubers he reached out to didn't get back to him and basically has a pity party, like a petulant child whose friends didn't wish him happy birthday. Also because of the creators who he interacted with before didn't react to his videos on live stream, Max believes that it's an act of self-preservation and that they selfishly ignored the endangerment of minors. Max then explained the reasoning behind his name switch was meant to be a metaphorical representation of influencers who apply cult-like techniques to harvest and cultivate a community. Mainly, I'd say the theme of this video, besides being a tall glass of copium, is that he believes quantity of a talking head YouTube video unfairly surpasses the quality of a more artistic approach. This is simply a video from a frustrated YouTuber whose content did horrible in the algorithm. But again, like before, it's camouflaged as a representation of a vigilante justice against child abusers not getting the spotlight it deserved. But then it only gets worse from here as big names are about to enter the arena. On November 25th, 2023, Mama Max would upload a video titled, quote, this is the greatest cancellation of all time, at Penguin Zero, hashtag we are real. The video was meant to be a bait and switch as it portrays a cancellation of Moist Critical, but it's actually just another call to action. Another call to action. The idea of the video seems to be an attempt at an introspective thrust towards the folly and irrelevance that YouTube commentary channels cultivate. An obsession with what Max would consider trivial content that apparently overwhelms the algorithm. Market blocking the more serious toned subjects, like the ones Max covers from reaching a wider audience. What Max hopes for in this video is for bigger influencers to avoid the topical mainstays and instead cover the darker, more uncommon stories that Max believes they are avoiding. Influencers can redefine what it means to be a content creator in the digital age. We can set new standards for the kind of content that gets attention and shapes conversations. This shift in priorities from purely entertaining to meaningfully impactful work can pave the way for more informed and action-oriented online community. It's an opportunity for influencers to use their platforms for something greater than just views and likes. To become agents of change in a world that desperately needs it. 
Max's video would then transition into an attempt to get Charlie's attention, as Max would drop his DMs with Charlie, where he basically begged him to watch Max's original video, continuously DMing him to check up on him after Charlie went dark. It's like a jilted lover, as Max continued to be ignored, the pros within the messages become more and more manipulative. In the video to Moist Critical, Max would reveal a link in one of the screenshots of the DMs to Charlie which would lead to a short YouTube video that invites all to find the information on the legal case that's allegedly being funded due to the authorities failing the victims. The only caveat being anyone who wants to be pertained to this information would have to sign an NDA. You are invited to a mass call between many high-profile YouTubers and the survivors of a destructive sex cult that has victimized hundreds of children. The leader is still active. This is the real deal. Law enforcement has failed us. We have solid evidence we are saving for the legal case. You will be allowed to see everything under an NDA. They have been screaming their story for the past seven years. I think it's time we finally listen. Your involvement would entail a brief 15-minute session allotting three minutes per survivor. A subsequent Q&A is optional. Your mere presence could provide immense solace to these young individuals. If you would like to participate, we would be grateful to have you. Later in the video, Max would come off as even more exploitative in an attempt to get Charlie's attention publicly, because apparently pestering him in DMs did not work, during which Max even tries to recreate footage of Charlie playing with his dogs. This video is very much so a missing the mark by Miles. Max would also concentrate a part of his video on Sniper Wolf, which also led to a lot of backlash because people felt that Max insinuating that Jack's films getting docked was just irrelevant drama. Max's losing streak with uploads continued as Max would lose 2,000 subscribers and would begin to get bombarded with comments criticizing him. These weren't just biased hate comments. No, these were from his actual fans who did not like where this was going at all. It's almost like people were starting to understand the perspective that Tommy C was coming from. Now, at this point, Mom Max was officially enduring the most criticism he's ever encountered while being a YouTuber, and it kept coming. One other thing, remember when I talked about Angry Slug and how he would return? Well, it turns out Slug was brought back into the fold and helped edit Max's video on Charlie, as well as create the thumbnail. Good for him? Commentary YouTuber Sensitive Society would drop a video criticizing Mama Max the very next day, pointing out how ridiculous everything was. If all the content you're getting from this guy is exposing Creed, what does the title insinuate? You know what I mean? Like, maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys don't agree. But it kind of makes it seem like this guy is exposing Penguin Zero Charlie as a creep. I don't know if that was his intention. And I'm not the only one who thought this. There's a lot of people who are in the comments section who was like, what is this about? Is Penguin Zero a creep? And just overall, it's one of the strangest, weirdest videos and kind of guilt tripping people into doing the same type of content he's making. And this is going to sound very familiar, Max's execution is in his fake cancellation video on Moist Critical. This video would get Max's attention, and the same day on November 26, 2022, Mama Max would go live, something he rarely does, and address the criticism he was getting in a live stream titled, Fight Me. Max would be joined by Spencer, as Max explained his reasoning on why he made the video to try and get Critical's attention. He would also continue to fight back against the comments on his video that he had been getting a lot of traction, and his frustrations were also made known about the pushback he was enduring. Max would then react to Sensitive Society's video about him, in which Max refused the inclination that he was trying to guilt trip everyone. At one point, Max impulsively begins to write down a bunch of names of YouTubers that the chat suggests he go get in touch with. And one of those names is yours truly. It goes without saying, don't do that. <laughs> it was actually a fan of mine who suggested it. Well, I guess if Max wants me to answer him on whether or not I'd have a conversation, I'll get to you, buddy, when I get to you. I got, I got bigger fish to fry and more important people than you to pay attention to. Sorry. Later, Max would address the backlash with his editor, Angry Slug, in which Max said that he's not going to engage in personal drama because that hurts the overall goal of saving children, and that when it comes to Slug, it's a lot of misinformation. The video on Critical, as well as the live stream, opened up the floodgates when it came to public critiques of Mama Max. First and foremost, Charlie addressed Mama Max on a live stream and relayed 
that he was none too happy about how Max went about this after explaining that he was dealing with COVID while Max was trying to get in touch with him. Max had also changed his name back to Mama Max from God Cult after apparently did not work and whatever weird metaphor he was going for was just completely lost on the audience. Max would do another live stream with Spencer in which Lyrics would call in to debate him. Lyrics had recently returned to commentary and him and another small commentary channel named Colton had a back and forth with both Mama Max and Spencer in which at one point Mama Max claimed that he did not guilt trip Moist Critical. The conversation would eventually end on bad terms when Lyrics used the dreaded R slur, which is ironic given that Max was mad at Corpse Husband for throwing him under the bus due to the use of that slur. Max would then end up kicking Lyrics and Colton from the call. Later, Mudahar would call in and the two would have a more controlled conversation where Mudahar acted in good faith and explained to Max that again, Max's execution was poor and that if he wants to tell an actual story, it's there for him to do so. Seriously, this story is about a man who thinks he's a werewolf who preys on children. People are going to watch that either way. Max more or less agreed, but then the next day, Tommy C did a stream, and Tommy would again speculate if Max was a grifter. Muda would call into Tommy's stream and would agree with Tommy on the fact that something just doesn't seem right, and promise to look more into the story. Tommy would then have a DM exchange with Max, which would later drop on Twitter. Soon after that, other content creators would join in on the criticism, and eventually Mama Max's whole fan base, as well as his Reddit, began to question Max's intentions. In fact, some of these people were even questioning the validity of previous content, and believed that they had found proof that he may have faked some of it. All of this is mainly equated to Mama Max producing a complete misfire, that his audience is waiting with bated breath for him to come correct. Max would also apologize to Charlie in a pinned comment to his video, as well as changing the title and thumbnail. Now, there was a lot of debate on whether Max should go to the authorities about this, and Spencer did say that at the time she had reported Camden to the police, and other victims have come forward since then. And there have been attempts to obtain arrest records from Camden, as well as police reports that were allegedly made in 2017. Some of this has come to fruition, but nothing has been confirmed as of yet. But recently, Max put out a short proclaiming that he is in contact with Camden's local authorities and that an update is on the horizon. Anyway, there was an update. On January 5th, 2024, Mama Max went live again and it got even worse. The first part of the stream was dedicated to the new victim of Camden Davis. And in the stream, Max gives updates in which he states that they are not going to civil route and are raising money so that all the victims can fly out to Georgia to report the alleged werewolf pedophile together. However, near the end, Max ended up addressing the commentary community and got pushback from multiple creators. Max. Hi, Zyli. <laughs> hey, Max. Now, we've talked before. You should have known me coming up here would probably not be a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I don't know. I don't think so. Because you're not listening to anybody else. So what makes me think you're going to listen to me? Because I'm going to tell you now, lyrics had hella good points. Muda, once again, had hella good points. And you're not listening to them. And every time Muda talks to you for two times in a row, two li I think it was two live streams in a row, but two times Muda has talked to you, you act like your daddy whooped your ass and you look like you're about to cry because you know his ass is right. But yet you don't do what he says. What is wrong with you? You plan to go to the police, right? Of course. So what's the point past that? Because then you're talking court. So then if it goes, if you go to police and say they say, okay, yay, we're going to go get him or whatever. I don't know. Live in a dreamland, whatever you want to feel. Are you going to court after that? I'm unsure about the entire process. I think that's the job of the district attorney, but y'all would likely, the survivors would likely appear as witnesses. Okay. What bothers me is your answer right there. You've been doing this for five years and you don't know how the process goes? How I've many never people been have court. you actually caught? I've never been to court. Oh. Oh. Well, then that... Well, shit. That makes sense then. There you go, folks. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Lyrics, Mudahar, Smaggle Daggle, Siley Gets Real. It was another stream in which he spiraled and even ended it with a bit of Max foreshadowing his channel. And honestly, it's not looking good. Now, I just wanna say on record that I'm not doubting Spencer's accusations. This video is not about Spencer. 
We'll eventually see what happens, and what I'm pointing out is how Max has gone about this. If there's one pattern I've found while researching Mama Max, is that Max has a disoriented design on how to progress through social media, and it leads to piss poor execution. If Max would just create the content and tell the story, this would lead to more eyes and ears. He wouldn't have to go drum up drama to create a spectacle because he's a talented filmmaker and his content is above par. In fact, his content sets a higher standard than really anything else on this platform. Look, I, I don't know if Max is a grifter or if he truly wants to help victims, but ultimately a YouTuber's ego has always been their downfall. And I think this case resonates in the same way. Take Moist Critical for instance. Charlie is a man who helped out Max not once but twice, two times Charlie has used his platform to lend a helping hand to Max, even brought Max up to the CEO of YouTube, and Max throws it all away because he didn't get a response in DMs. If that's not a fragile ego, I don't know what to tell you. Max has to control his ego if he wants to get anywhere with any of this. He has to buckle down and just make a video and not get caught up in the weeds of what people like Tommy C think. He also has to realize that he's never going to change the world with the YouTube video and that there's a lot of people that just don't really want to watch his type of content. They just want to watch stupid gamers like XQC scream unintelligible nonsense in their microphone. Max has an audience that will watch everything he makes, but as long as it took him to make it to the top, that fall from grace can happen really quickly. So my advice to Mama Max is to quit being a bitch and make the fucking video, or this will actually be your downfall. If you really want to help people, just make the fucking video. It's not that hard. N another quick update. While working on this video, there's been tons of new updates that have been transpiring literally as we speak. If more comes to light, I guess we can expect a part two. So if you like this doc, you can go check out my documentary playlist that's filled with video essays like this one. I'd like to give a special shout out to the research helpers on this one. Uh, you can find the links down below, of course. And um, Take care, be well, and Mama Max, uh, bro, if you fucking get distracted with this fucking video, and you d you're done. Thank you all uh, for joining the stream and participating in this conversation. We'll see well. you. We'll see you um, probably never again. <laughs>